The following podcast contains alcohol-enhanced conversations about alcohol, as well as the potential for the discussion about topics of dubious, disturbing, possibly offensive, but usually hilarious interest. The opinions stated herein are solely of the persons making them, and any endorsement of these opinions by any other party is not implied. Foul language is likely, but intolerant viewpoints are not. Listener intoxication is advised. Hello and welcome to episode 45 of the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. I'm Scott. And I'm Ed. And if you know anything about our show, you know that an episode number ending in a zero or a five can only mean one thing, cocktail. Cocktail episode. Now, previously on the podcast, Ed, Gabe, Anders, and myself have collectively made a total of 30 different whiskey cocktails. Mm-hmm. And what usually happens on those episodes is that we also end up making a bonus cocktail or two using slight variations that we think will make them better. That's correct. But tonight, we're going to take that bonus cocktail theme to an extreme and make three different versions of three different cocktails by changing only one ingredient, vermouth. That's right. So as you might expect, we'll go over the history of vermouth, provide some cocktail backstories, and compare each vermouth variation of each cocktail in order to answer the age-old cocktail question that we just made up, does your vermouth vermatter? (laughs) (laughs) So so yeah, Scott, listen. Wait, I'm not done. (laughs) Very. But first, Ed's going to get things going by telling us the three vermouths we're vetting, the three cocktails we're creating, and the two new guests we'll be enjoying them with tonight. Right. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. So, you know, people who follow the podcast, and we thank you for that, know that we're members of the local whiskey lounge in Mount Holly and that we have a locker there. And you meet a lot of great people. We've talked about different people in there. And our guests with us today are Marty and Rachel. Say hi, guys. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Hey, guys. Welcome to the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. You're finally here at the gates of Whiskey Tangentry. <laughs> so um, I think the first conversation we ever had with Marty and Rachel at the lounge, Rachel pops up and says, you know what you need to do on this podcast thing that you guys have? Yeah, this little <laughs> thing that you do. Yeah, that thing you do. <laughs> well, you need to talk about vermouth. No one ever talks about vermouth. And, you know, I looked at her and I thought to myself, you know what? Holy crap, she's right. Yeah. Everybody makes such a big deal about what whiskey you're drinking. Mm -hmm. Is it a rye? Is it high proof? Is it a high rye bourbon? Is it a weeder? This will be good for Manhattan. This will be good for Manhattan. But so rarely do people talk about the vermouth. So we thought it was a great idea. We were going to do this like last summer. Yeah. And then, of course, a thing called COVID came, what? and, and everybody, What's that? Mm-hmm. everybody went deep in their bunkers, like it was like <laughs> a twelve-month tornado alert coming in. <laughs> you know, Auntie M, Auntie M, I want to drink vermouth. Get in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Mm-hmm. So, and, and once again, we've all enjoyed our you know gallons and gallons of the Martini and Rossi sweet and dry vermouth. <laughs> gallons. It, it's, it's done a tremendous job of, of keeping us in cocktails for the last 25 years, but we decided to set the Martini and Rossi back on the shelf and pick up three, a little bit of a higher profile vermouth, and I'm going to tell you what they are. First of all, there's the Dolan Rouge Vermouth de Chambury, which is a French sweet vermouth, about 16%. ABV, which would be what thirty-two. You can just you just can't write thirty-two proof on my notes, bastard. Can't you just double it? I could, but I, <laughs> now I'm doing math. It's like thirty-two. <laughs> so the Koki Storico Vermouth di Torino, which we just call Koki. So we basically call them Dolan Koki, and then the Carpano Antica Formula, which is the most expensive. And we'll talk about the prices as we get into the drinks. Yes. And so we're going to make three cocktails using all three vermouth in each cocktail. There's the Brain Duster, which has rye, whiskey, sweet vermouth, a bath of absence, and bitters. Right. Then there's the Blood and Sand, which is a scotch cocktail with, again, sweet vermouth, cherry liqueur, and orange juice. That sounds delicious. That sounds good. And then there's a 212 Manhattan, which is made with bourbon, sweet vermouth, and bitters, which hopefully I can have a cherry in there. I like that. If you wish. I want a cherry on top. All right. 
So uh, how this is all going to work. So this is pretty complicated. Um, this is what you wrote, Rachel. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this is all Rachel's fault. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so first we're going to do a taste comparison between the um, vermouths all by themselves, just so that we can get a, a sense of what each tastes like without being right. In a, we're going to have a sense uh, like in a, a cocktail. Tasting. Right. Tasting. Then we'll take a break and then we we'll make three variations of the first cocktail using the three different vermouths and then taste and see how they compare. Then we'll do the same for the second cocktail and also the third. However, for the third, I thought it would be fun since by that time we will have a lot of experience with the different vermouths under our belt. As were our liver. Yes, as were our livers. <laughs> and we'll taste them blind and see oh. if we can pick out oh. which vermouth is in which version oh. of the Manhattan. I like that. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah, so Rachel, you were very adamant about us doing this. Like, what was your revelation with vermouth? When did you realize that this was a, you know, tell the story? Yeah, um, so I've been a fan of bourbon and, and started dabbling with Manhattans. And we were visiting some friends in Sarasota and, you know, drinking different cocktails. And I ordered a Manhattan and it just was incredible. It was the best tasting Manhattan I'd ever had. And I wasn't sure if, you know, she had used a special bitters or so I went and talked to the, the bartender and, and she said, it's absolutely about the vermouth. And mm. she showed mm. me the bottle of Cokie and I was converted instantly mm. on the spot. I made my husband look through every liquor store in the area so he could oh. find Cokie and he's kept me stocked in Cokie ever since. <laughs> and when we went to the local, I remember having a whole conversation with Anders. And when I ordered my cocktail, I said, and what kind of vermouth do you use? And he just looked at me. I said, do you have any Cokie? And he just said, oh my God, you know, <laughs> I love Cokie. He talked about, you know, the the bar that he worked with. Um, oh, uh, Hopsing's Hop Laundromat. Hopsing's Hop Sing Laundromat. And he yep. said his boss loved it. His boss would just drink it with uh, seltzer. I, I drink it that way sometimes myself. Yeah. And then sometimes he couldn't find the Cokie. So I, I branched yeah. out and tried a couple different ones. And um, it's just been a, a fun way to play with it. I, I agree with you. Why invest all the dollars in, in the bourbon and then use, you know, essentially flat Coke syrup? Uh, yeah, basically right? a $6 dollar yeah. a six yeah. vermouth. And it's a great point that, you know, you can just sip vermouth by itself. I've seen people do it. It always seems to be old people, like some old Italian guy sitting on a corner just sipping vermouth at yeah. a little cafe. But it's such a revelation for me once I just realized that I wasn't addressing, you know, a third of the drink, really. Yeah, vermouth is sort of the forgotten ingredient. Yeah, which is unbelievable because it's the whole thing that makes it a drink. I know. Otherwise, it's just whiskey and bitters. I know. And it's funny what you said, Ed, uh, about the people just drinking it, like old Italian people, because yeah. it's right in the history <laughs> of this. You'll see exactly where that came from. Vermouth is an aromatized wine fortified with additional alcohol and flavored with various botanicals. You can never hurt by putting additional alcohol in anything. Go ahead, that's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. The consumption of wines fortified with herbs and roots is believed to begin in China at least as early as 1250 BCE what? during the Shang Dynasty, eventually making its way west to ancient Greece by 400 BCE. A popular ingredient in these recipes was wormwood, also a classic ingredient in absinthe, partly because of the belief that it was effective at treating stomach disorders and intestinal parasites. Mm. <laughs> In fact, the name vermouth is the French pronunciation of the German word for wormwood, vermouth. What? Owing to the fact that the fortified wines containing wormwood existed in Germany beginning in the 16th century. Also around this time, an Italian merchant... and, and uh, An Italian merchant... Where, where was he from? Italy. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> an Italian merchant... Producing a similar product that he called Wormwood Wine that also contained other botanical ingredients. Competing brands developed shortly thereafter in France, each containing their own proprietary mix. Now, the modern version of the beverage was first produced in the late 18th century in Turin, Italy. Although primarily used for medicinal purposes, it soon began being served as an aperitif before meals. Eventually, fashionable Turin cafes... Mm -hmm. would serve it to guests around the clock. And by the late 19th century, vermouth had become popular with bartenders as a key ingredient for cocktails. You know, Scott, I heard that in the Shroud of Turin, there's a little vermouth stain, actually, oh, in the there? corner. Yes. Is there? Yeah, that was actually proven by a uh, x-ray uh, of the Shroud they, of Turin. Uh, have they dated that? <laughs> it's dated. It's yeah. dated to whatever word. Carbon dated. It's carbon dated, yes. The, the nice. 33... Yeah. Yeah, AD, yeah. Well, they, they were serving Manhattans at the last right. supper, evidently. I mean, I mean, it fits the timeline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so vermouth is produced by starting with a base of neutral grape wine or unfermented wine must, which is the collective term for the parts of the grape left over after the winemaking process, the peels, the seeds, the stems, and everything else. Each manufacturer then adds additional alcohol and a proprietary mixture of dry ingredients consisting of aromatic roots, barks, flowers, seeds, herbs, and spices to the base concoction. 
after the wine has been aromatized and fortified and possibly redistilled, the vermouth is sweetened with either cane sugar or caramelized sugar, depending on the style. Historically, there have been two main types of vermouth, sweet and dry, but over the centuries, additional styles have been created, including extra dry white, sweet white, which is also known as blanc or bianco, red, also known as rouge or rosso, amber, and rosé. As such, vermouth brands can vary wildly, with each manufacturer keeping its recipe a closely guarded secret, which is why we're doing this tonight. Right, yes. Mm. Right, so first we're going to taste the Dolan. Mm -hmm. The Dolan in your rocks glasses. Dolan Rouge Vermouth D. Chambry. Chambry. Mm, smells delicious. Ooh, it's very nice. Very herby. Very herby. Very herby. Mm. Yep. Wow. It's um sweet with an interesting finish. Mm. It's like almost like a, a rosemary or a oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really weird. I'm getting almost like this is very strange. It's very sweet, and then there's a flash, and it goes right away of like a Worcestershire sauce. It's got uh -huh. like, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah like uh -huh. there's like a fla uh, that like a vinegary, yeah, almost, vinegary uh, bitter. Yeah, yep, it, it's yep. I mean, it just hits you for a second and it's gone. But yeah, it definitely has yeah, that crazy note to it. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, the spices all hit you in an, a collaboration, so it's hard to identify an individual it one. It definitely. reminds me of yeah. a, a, a roast chicken. Oh, yeah. like right. A lot of the herbs. Well, no, right. Yes, sure. Taste is like what you put herbs on de a, Provence. A chicken. Herbs de Provence. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I'm, I'm out of room. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you have two more glasses. I drank the Dolan. Mm. Ed, I think you have some fun facts for the Dolan. I do. Oh. So um, I didn't know that was now. Some uh, stats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you finished yours, so yeah, might as well read it while oh, we drink. Yeah, while you finish drinking, I, I'm free now, so let me do the. Uh, the, the <laughs> Cheers, everyone. It's a uh, except Ed. It's a French sweet vermouth, as we mentioned. Uh, Sixteen percent alcohol. It costs about fifteen dollars for the big bottle. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cheap. It includes between thirty and forty spices and botali bot botalico, yes. um, <laughs> botanicals. Yes, botanicals. Botanicals. <laughs> between thirty and forty spices and botanicals, including coriander. Hyssop. <laughs> Rhubarb. <laughs> he knew I would not know what to do with it. looked like a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a bad Scrabble draw. It does. Yeah. Um, Hyssop, it's called. Yeah. Uh, rhubarb and um, curacao. Yes. Fun facts. Dolan began making his vermouth in 1821. Dolan Vermouth won a gold medal at the World's Fair in Philadelphia in 1876. Mm. Mm. Shout out for Philly, y'all. And the Dolan Company is one of the only independent producers of vermouth left in the world. It's like this little tiny shop on the corner of Paris and French Avenues in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I will play uh, <laughs> nice French music under I, this. I made all that up. I have no idea where the company <laughs> is. But it is, uh, I'm assuming, somewhere in France. It is somewhere in France. Yes, it is. At an undisclosed location, <laughs> the Dolan people still make it. They move around at night from place to place. It's pretty good. Yeah, if I ever want to look really like bougie, I'm going to order like, give me a little Dolan's on the rocks. No, can you, no, can you, sweetie? Huh? Can you toots? Hey, can you? Could you get me some Dolan hey, toots? Uh, make it snappy too, all right? I'm going to sit out here and smoke <laughs> one of those nice, thin, black Italian cigars, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, Wear some I sandals. I dare you to do this to Anders next time oh. you're, you're at the local. Yeah, do that. Do that to Anders. <laughs> 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 I mean, that'd be, as he would say, you can ask me like that if you don't want to get a drink. <laughs> You right. just sounded just like him. Yeah. Got real quiet. Well, you that's could perfect. do that. Yeah. Right, no, no, that, that's Anders that. all over, right? It's, he's quiet, but he's yeah. direct. I mean, you could do that, but then I'd have to throw you out of the lounge. So. <laughs> you know, I hope you won't do that. I really don't want to throw you out of the lounge, but I will if I have to. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, have we finished? Then let's finish this. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm already Ed finished this five minutes ago. I'm already holding the next one in my hand right now. All right, now. so the next one is the Coqui Storico oh, Vermouth de Terrin. This is fun. Right, this is the one that started the whole concept of this podcast. Oh boy, this one. What a difference on the nose, first oh, of all. Oh, yes. So let me give you this. I'll save the fun facts, but oh, I'll give you the yeah. stats, okay? Yeah. This one's an Italian sweet vermouth. Mm. Again, 16% alcohol. Price is about $20 for the 750 milliliter. Ingredients, wine, sugar, alcohol, wormwood, sandalwood, citrus, musk, myrrh, nutmeg, and rhubarb. So now that there's myrrh in this, I have to say this might be the vermouth that I actually spilled on the Shroud of Turin. Oh. <laughs> this was the one. <laughs> this was yeah. the one because it has myrrh in it. Lord knows the Savior loved myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of the wise men gifts, right? I remember it that. Was. Right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, this has a lot more on the nose. Oh, yeah. Not quite as herbaceous. It's more sweet, but... um. Wow, it's really... Oh, it's, it's so nice. God, it's, the beginning of it is 
just absolute loveliness for me. Oh, gosh. Yep. But at the very, very end, just a taste of the way I feel drinking Campari. There's a, oh, yeah. there's yes. a strong, yes. bitter finish that you hit like a wall. That's, that's the wormwood. Yep. So yeah, that it's on my tongue right now, and that's all I'm tasting. Right. It starts off sweet mm. and ends bitter, so you mm. want it the more sweet to get rid of so the bitter good. and you just keep drinking it's so good it's so oh there it is i i can definitely tell because one of the first conversations that rachel and i had at the lounge was about boulevardiers yeah. and how much we both are fans of them and it isn't mm. um and this i can <laughs> see why this is your favorite vermouth because this does exactly what the what, what ed was saying it's so sweet and cherries and yeah dark currants and raisins it's so oh, deep vanilla deep yeah. sweet oh vanilla absolutely mm. and then like at the very end it dries everything on the back of your tongue and yeah. you're just left with like this pleasant i think bitterness this yes. is the yeah. yes when i make manhattans with this i use the least of it as any of the ones on the list and mm-hmm. i usually either cut back my bitters a lot or sometimes i don't even put bitters in because i want to you know make it clear that i do buy and use this because it's exceptional it's not that bitter it's not as bitter as campari is to me and when it's hidden in a drink it actually enhances it yeah. But some fun facts. Koki began making vermouth in 1891, 70 years after Dolan, by the way. And um, by 1913, there were a dozen Koki tasting bars located throughout northern Italy, with some still in operation today over 100 years later. This is delicious. Marty, what do you think about this? This is the one I always talk about with Rachel when I, when I make a Manhattan. I'm, I'm a, I like the mid range for sweetness for my Manhattans. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I always sort of have to adjust my, uh, my vermouth proportion in the drink based on the sweetness. So this one I always back off a little bit because I think it's very sweet up front. It, it is. Yeah. So I keep it this is. to a, probably maybe a half a portion as, uh, yeah. and I think yeah, it's funny that I keep it half a portion because it's bitter at the end. We have oh. two completely different reasons yeah. for, for dialing it back. It's very interesting there. Yeah, I like I like the back end. I like the uh, little bit of bitterness. I like a nice so. back end too, if you can. Be, uh, <laughs> if you can find it, because, uh, <laughs> nice back end, some legs. It's all very nice. Wow, it all goes together. Wow, but think about the difference, right? Could these not be more different? Oh, they're so, so different. It's incredible, and they're both sweet vermouth. Yeah, exactly. So I'm really excited to taste these now in the cocktails, having tasted these these side by side, and with the Carpana Antique, it's still to come. Um, I like the. Koki better than the Dolan. Absolutely. I think the Dolan absolutely suffers by comparison. Yeah. Like in retrospect, it's it tastes more one dimensional. Yeah. It's thinner. This is a nice, rich balance. Yeah. It does have a yeah. thicker mouthfeel, even though they're the oh, same alcohol percentage. Almost a little syrupy. Yeah. yeah. Wow, God, this is so good. Like the vanilla is really coming out now. And real vanilla, like vanilla yes. bean, like the floral We're still vanilla that you the get. Oh, everybody. yes. <laughs> yes, we are still talking. About. Were you trying to move on to the Carpano? I'm sorry. <laughs> so Scott brings me a bottle of this when we invite him over. For I dinner. do. So yeah. I have him over. I need to have you over again. I'm almost out. <laughs> oh, you're, yeah. oh, you're out? Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, invite me over. I'll bring another bottle. <laughs> I want to be clear. It's when Marty and her invite him over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. coming over on a Tuesday. Yeah, I'm, to, I'm actually there uh, most of the time. To do quilting. Oh, wait, wait. Marty's going to be there? Oh, forget it. <laughs> when me and Scott do quilting together, he always brings a bottle of Koki over. Quilting. I thought she said Quote, book club. unquote. Right, our whiskey quilt is almost <laughs> right. done. Marty's like, I thought he said book club. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are already done? Uh, oh, almost. Here. Almost. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, this is so good. I can't. Mm-hmm. I'm. I want to get the whole bottle out and. Drink mm-hmm. it. Well, you guys have so me and Marty. So Marty, what are you smelling on the air? Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. We'll move on. Fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the next one is the Carpano Antica. Formula. All right. Once again, it's an Italian sweet vermouth, 16.5%. It is expensive. It's $35 a bottle for the uh, 750 Yeah. The ingredients are Italian wine with caramelized sugar, wormwood, and numerous aromatics, including saffron from Iran, vanilla beans from Madagascar, Papua New Guinea, and Tahiti. They have three different types of vanilla beans? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. that's bougie as hell, I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's smell it. Interestingly, this has Ooh. less of a nose, I think, from the Koki. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but the nose it does have is delicious. Yeah, the nose is nice, but like it's not quite as intense. Not as complex either. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's delicious. Mm. And it has a, and it's funny, it has the bitterness at the end again. Not, it, not as, but not much. as much, which is why I like this one better. This is almost a mix of the first two. Right. All right. So <laughs> fun facts about the Carpano. Oh. Antonio Bendetto Carpano invented the formula that gave rise to vermouth in 1786, combining herbs and spices with Muscatel wine. King Vittorio Amadeo. The third. Of Sardinia took 
such an immediate liking to the Corpana's new drink <laughs> that he adopted it as the official spirit of his royal household. Today, Corpano is so secretive about their recipes and the production methods that only three people in the world know the full details. Mm. Wow. And Scott and I are two of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're never allowed to fly on the same plane. <laughs> yeah. The fact that we're in the same room right now is a violation. Right, it's a violation. I mean, I think I like the cookie better, but this is better than the Dolan. I don't taste as much vanilla as I did on the cookie with this, and they have three different kinds of like exotic vanilla yeah, in this. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I still like this, though. This wow. is quite good. This is so good. I, I like it. I just don't feel that it's as, as so complex mm-hmm. as the cookie. Well, I can't wait till you pick this during the blind Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of thinking of these things in two ways, right? The first way is, how is it going to taste in a mix, in a Manhattan, yeah. in a whatever I yeah. make? And if I think about it as just drinking it by itself, uh, the cookie is definitely the number one. I think yeah. the other two just would be a better mm-hmm. addition to a drink. As yeah. funny as it is, because of the bitter ending, if I had to drink one of them by itself, it would probably be the Dolan, because the Dolan has the least bitter ending. Yeah, right. and that makes sense for you, and that's why there's different kinds of vermouth for different kinds of people, right. just like whiskey and wine and beer and everything else. Yeah. yeah. In fact, if I was going to drink vermouth in a glass, I'd probably just drink port. <laughs> <laughs> and just go. say it's vermouth. <laughs> hey, and Anders gave us a trick. If you're ever out of vermouth, use port. You can Absolutely. use we've had port. Manhattan with yeah. it's sure. delicious. Yeah, it's a fine replacement for vermouth Absolutely. and cocktails. All right, well, there you go. So, All right, so let's take a break and wash some glasses and get that first cocktail up. Around the wine. All right, so we're back, and Scott has whipped up the first cocktail, the Brain Duster, made with all three of the vermouth, the Dolan, the Koki, and the Carpano. And uh, we're going to taste them all. Is there an order to this, or we just grab them and start chucking? <laughs> no. All right, so I'm going to do a one-paragraph history. I'm going to tell you what the ingredients are in this, and then we'll taste them all. All right. All right, so the Brain Duster. Can I drink yet? Can I? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, it's just a paragraph. Okay. Literally four <laughs> sentences. Sorry, I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> According to the Annals of Cocktail History, mm-hmm. the Brain Duster was a cocktail with equal parts rye, vermouth, and absinthe. Oh, my God. Equal parts of absinthe? Yeah. Named as such in 1895 by bartender George J. Kapler after an old-timey term for what happens when you smack someone upside the head. Oh, wow. In 1949, Esquire published the recipe in their handbook for hosts warning, hold your hat. But the Brain Duster goes by another name, the Waldorf, a version created at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel Bar in the early 1900s. And that's actually what I made tonight. So the original recipe was equal parts rye, vermouth, and absinthe. But since we're tasting vermouth here, the absinthe would have just overwhelmed everything because oh that's just yeah. too much absinthe. So yeah. what we're doing here is the Waldorf Astoria one, which is two ounces of rye. We use bullet rye, three ounces of sweet vermouth. We have it each of the vermouths we tasted already, three dashes of Angostura bitters, and just a rinse of absinthe before I poured it in the glass. All right. So first we got the Dolan. First the though. Dolan in the rocks glass. Yep. Smell it. Mm. Actually, no. Fuck it. Just taste it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah don't smell it. You're going to get all warm one. Okay. Ooh, that's a, that's a nice drink. That's very good. Nice drink. I definitely taste the absinthe. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm glad I just did a rinse. Cause, but um, I think it's a perfect amount, actually. Yeah, it, it's a nice accent. All right, let's go. All right, let's, let's, do, keep, well, let's, let's taste keep a nice pace here. Yeah, text it. Do the cokey, the, the brain duster with the cokey. The cokey in our coupe glasses. Anders has said that the coupe glasses were fashioned after the breasts of Marie Antoinette. Mm. Interesting. Wow. I, mean, I mean, the Episode drink. 30. <laughs> I mean, though, honestly, let's talk about how drastically different these two drinks are now yeah. with yeah. the change yes. of vermouth. Whoa. I like the first one better a little bit, but I bet the uh, you three all like this one better. I do, actually. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It cuts through the absinthe a yeah. little bit more, and it gives a little more of the other... Uh, Absolutely, Marty. Yeah. I can barely taste the absinthe in this one where the absinthe was really present 
on the Dolan mm, one. Yep. Yeah. Think about how herb forward that the Dolan was yeah. and the absinthe is, is it's got that bitterness. Uh-huh. So yep. it's it's more one dimensional, whereas with the cokey, I think you have mm. the sweetness yeah. and the syrupiness to balance it out. And I don't really taste the bitterness of the cokey that we were tasting yeah. it by itself no. in this. It's kind of uh, balanced by the other ingredients. I also I, w- I always found that reggae was very herb forward. Different herb. Different herb. And so now we're on to the Carpano version. Are we? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh Oh my God. I have a winner for me. This is a winner for me. Wow. Carpano. That's Ah. fantastic. Wow. Holy crap. I can't believe these are the same drink. (laughs) It's so. Everybody at home, listen. Um, I know if you were like us, uh, we've slept on vermouth for too long, and I'm sure Anders is somewhere smiling, shaking his head <laughs> like, I try to tell people. He is. It's like, I, I told him to do this. No one listens to him. They me, didn't invite me tonight. <laughs> he's here with us in spirit for yes, sure. Definitely. Uh, I mean, because he would have probably told us, for this drink, use the Carpano. And mm-hmm. just for the record, he would have come by, but he has a... Uh, a personal anniversary. Right. And yeah. speaking of that, um, I did graduate this week with a, another master's degree. Yes, so I will pat myself on the back. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I spent a couple of years in uh, Kentucky in the distilleries. Um, I can't make it. I can't make it. It was an online university who was based right in who kentucky. would send me whiskey and, <laughs> no they uh, would not send you well whiskey. they should have because they were in kentucky they had all the whiskey right there it had nothing to do with you whiskey, got a whiskey folks. degree i don't oh. well i do but well the, the, unofficially we do because we have right, a podcast about right, whiskey so. right i simultaneously got two master's degrees one in what i studied and then one in what i lived right mm. i am a scottish lord that's right yeah he, he is there's a, a plaque in the other room that says so oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the queen gave him that too <laughs> it, nice. yes the queen did <laughs> you are now a Scottish law just because your name is Scott. Why do you sound like Monty Python? <laughs> because that's my whole reference for British people. <laughs> this is a cheese shop. <laughs> this is a dead parrot. This parrot has ceased to be. It is going to be just a car. <laughs> So, mm. for me, I'm ordering this with the Carpano. I don't know what you three are doing, but I'm definitely ordering the Carpano one. This is delicious. So, like when we tasted just the vermouth, we said that the Carpano was sort of a mix between the first two, and that's kind of what I'm getting in this cocktail. Mm. I'm getting a hint of the absinthe that I'm not getting on the Koki, because the Koki right. is sort of overwhelmingly absinthe, and the opposite is happening with the Dolan, but the Carpano is a perfect <laughs> balance of everything. It ah. is the Goldilocks, yeah. Yeah. I didn't think wow. that they were going to be all that different, and they really are they're all drastically different yeah now let me ask what do you think about um if we would have done the actual uh, recipe for these oh uh, Mm. oh wow that's what you're saying you want to do a a 1b around 1b is it i'm just wondering how you know would you know the absinthe we word is going to overwhelm but maybe some of these wouldn't have been as much Mm. yeah i I think the cokey would have better balanced out the absinthe that's true so yeah i get to your point i think if we made the original brain duster where everything was equal i think the cokey would be better in that drink we are not doing that (laughs) someone has to keep the train going on the track we have two more drinks to taste and we already just tasted three right now so it's nine drinks total yeah six more to go six more to go (laughs) um so let's just forget the vermouths this is a wonderful cocktail that i've never heard of yeah and it's a cocktail that goes back to 1895 apparently right so we're going to take a break now and we're going to come back with the blood and the sand yeah the two so we're back we're about to drink the second cocktail this is the scotch cocktail called mm. the blood and sand and scott's going to tell us what's in it yeah so first the history one paragraph again from liquor.com The recipe for the blood and sand first appeared in 1930s, the Savoy Cocktail Book by Harry Craddock, and has become a mainstay on bar menus since. 
Has it? Because I never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows if Craddock invented it or merely put it in his book, but we do know that the cocktail gets its name from a 1922 bullfighter movie starring Rudolph Valentino, the silent film star known as the Latin Lover. Although the movie itself wasn't exactly hailed, Valentino's performance was said to have been his masterpiece, just like the drink it inspired. <laughs> so this is equal parts of four ingredients. Blended scotch. I used monkey shoulder, sweet vermouth, the various vermouths that we have tonight. Cherry liqueur. I used the... Luxardo. Luxardo. Sangue Morlaco. Traditionally, you use cherry hearing liqueur. It's something you get in UK. I couldn't find it anywhere, so I couldn't get it. Limey bastards for making a drink that we can't have. Well, we'll show you. (laughs) And the fourth ingredient is orange juice, traditionally blood orange juice, but they're not in season. So I had to ask Anders and he said, well, just use regular orange juice and it'll be fine. That's what I did. Uh, You shake all the ingredients because it has a citrus. Bartenders will tell you to shake citrus because it aerates it and made the three different versions. And now we will taste it. So the first one we're doing is the Dolan vermouth. Yep. Mixed in with the blood and sand. Now, it should be said that a blended scotch is um, required for this. Like, you shouldn't use, like, a smoky scotch or a single malt. You don't want to do that, especially in a cocktail. Right, so you could use a Johnny Walker Red if you wanted to. Sure, or a Chivas Regal, perhaps. Right, you want to snazz it up a bit. Hmm. Hmm. It's no. a, it kind of tastes like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's not really much <laughs> there, though. I have to tell you, it's not, like... It's kind of thin. Yeah, I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I taste a lot of orange juice on the Dolan one. Mm. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to taste it with a Cokie. You know mm. what that's going to be like? Completely different. The Dolan's is getting kind of washed away by the orange juice, and the Cokie's like, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Much better. More depth of flavor, Holy right? Cr- mm. Again, like the last one. Yes. I can't believe that these are the same drinks. And it's funny because the sweetness of the orange juice counters the bitterness for the Cokie, and this right now is a perfect drink to me. Oh, yeah. Till the Carpana goes, oh, really? <laughs> Remember all that shit you talked last drink until you had me? <laughs> well, I'm sitting right over here, motherfuckers. <laughs> no, and no, you're right. So you get a lot of the, the deep uh, berry sweetness in the beginning, and yeah. then the orange juice takes over, and it counteracts all that bitterness. Yeah, and bitterness is still there, but it's kind of like kissed with the orange juice in this great little... So, you know, when I was making these cocktails, and we haven't tried their Carpano yet, but when I was just testing recipes, I made it with the Dolan because that's what I had the most of, and I didn't like the drink at all. And I even considered not even having the drink on the podcast because I didn't like it. But it's delicious with the cookie. Yeah, tastes like honey a little bit. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. All right, on to the uh, Carpano. Mm. Antica. Sorry. Formula. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers to myself. Mm. Hmm. It's good. Oh my God. It's really good. But it's different. So now I have to decide which it's got the edge because I, I don't think it blows the cokey away like it did in the last drink. I think yeah. the cokey has its own position in this drink, which is yeah, different. So I got to compare them side to side the now. The Capano and the Brain Dester was the absolute winner. But this one, they're so different. I think the cokey's better in this, I think the in this drink. Better, yeah. Yeah, I think it gives it more depth. The other one seems to be just super sweet on the front yeah. end and that's it. Sweet yeah. and then there's no balance of bitterness. It actually finishes too sweet. It's a fine cocktail with a Carpano. It, it is. And and right. I, if I got it, I wouldn't toss it back in the bartender's face, especially not you, Anders. Um, <laughs> Anders is like, why would you do it to any bartender? Right. Have, that's, not just that's, me. Right. It's, right. I, I'm, that's I frowned upon. <laughs> frowned upon. You will be thrown out. <laughs> Um, yeah, so when I first tasted it, I was like, wow, this is really good. And then it's sort of like Marty said, it's one note all the way through. Yeah. Whereas the Koki one changes from like, the start to the finish. Like I said, I, if you gave me the Carpano, I'd be like, oh, thanks. This is, that was delicious. Yeah. But if the Koki was there too, I'm like, well, yeah, I'd rather have the Koki. I kind of feel bad for the Dolan because we didn't yeah. like the Dolan vermouth. We didn't like the Dolan in any of the cocktails. Uh, so what's it good for? Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I think there's a different flavor profile. Maybe we did not find the right... That's All right. true, too. That's true What's too, it good fair. for? It's good yeah. for being $20 less than the Carpano. So in the well, first, <laughs> yes. So in my mind, I didn't like the Cokie in the first drink. I would go Dolan if I didn't feel like spending 35 okay. for the Carpano. But right. honestly, I think the Cokie and the Carpano should be in your fridge. Yeah. I mean, they both should be in there. So we did not do the, the Martini and, and, Rossi and Rossi one. Yeah. You can get it everywhere. It's the one you kind of start off with. It's like the Jim Beam or the Jack Daniels of vermouths that you do when you first have one. It's just standard. It's cheap. It's, listen, it, it isn't a terrible drink maker. No. But you have to adjust to it by having usually more whiskey than Martini and Rossi because it's too sweet. 
or using very peppery rye. So you have to adjust your whiskey to Martini and Rossi, where I think that the Cokie and the Carpano will lend itself to your whiskey. And, yeah. and no matter what the whiskey is, it'll find a way to make it work. You know, it's funny. When I go out and get a Manhattan, no one ever asked me as a bartender what vermouth. So know. true. I think that's one reason we've been trained to, to ignore it. Like, it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, and I do. I still do. Yeah, And I, I think maybe this episode what we're doing here is like when you order something maybe ask them what vermouth do you have what vermouth are you going to put in it i've asked that and sometimes you know if they're just kind of like a b-level bartender they look at me incredulously like what do you mean like the only vermouth partini and rossi like (laughs) like like i'm like i'm an idiot like i'm asking a stupid question i can't even tell you i guess it is sort of a boozy question what vermouth do you have (laughs) (laughs) well you know if you're going to charge me 15 dollars for a drink you better be ready for my bougie question Uh, well right so exactly. I guess we're saying don't be afraid. All right, I'll be honest. If it's an eight dollar Manhattan, I won't say a word. Right, right. <laughs> just put my two ounces. <laughs> right. If it's a twenty two dollar Manhattan, <laughs> right. then you better ask. Right. Yeah, I think you can get what two bottles of Martini and Rossi one point seven five for about the price of a fifteen dollar Manhattan. So. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, seriously, yeah. very yeah. good point. Good point. All right. So the Cokie's definitely the winner of the Blood and Sand. <laughs> I think so. Um, the yep. Car- the Carpano's a comfortable second. You can definitely live there. And yes. And the Dolan mm-hmm. once again gets washed away. Poor Dolan. And um, <laughs> and I. You know, <laughs> I think we we got to think about like there's got to be something for this. Oh my god, like you're so sweet. Right. Like, I know. I, you're I like, oh, can, can't Dolan play too? Can't so we find Dolan a oh. friend? It's herby, like something with cucumber. Or oh, something. how about maybe in a Boulevardier it would work <gasps> because Carpano, the Carpano, the Campari is so bitter, I, and this is so just one note sweet. You know what? I think Ed would love that. Yeah, if yes. he had some Campari, I would just shove yes. it down Ed's throat right now. <laughs> Sorry to be so bad. <laughs> I don't. You don't have. Oh no, I drank God. it. I drank it all maybe like a month ago. I mean, it's been a long pandemic. That's what I'll shut down your throat. Oh, really? Oh, really? Will you? <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So. Um, we're going to go clean the glass and come back with the 1-2 two, two Manhattan featuring hopefully a cherry. Yes. I will give you a cherry. Yes. All right. Like Sardo cherry. <laughs> a good one. Not yes, one of those cheap yes, maraschino yes. ones. Oh, no. It's not a Shirley Temple bitch. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Around the three. So we're back for the third drink, the classic 212 Manhattan. And this time, to spice it up, we are tasting them blind. So we have three mm. drinks, three Manhattans in front of us. All made with the Dolan, the Cokie, and the Carpano, but we don't know which is which. No. So we made many Manhattans, if you've listened to us in all our cocktail episodes. Then we've actually made Manhattans of other whiskeys on like shorts and stuff. So we figured we never made this. The 212 Manhattan, because if you go to a bar, this is the Manhattan that you're going to get from just a regular bartender. 212 is the area code of Manhattan. That's the bartender's trick. It's going to be two ounces of bourbon. It's going to be one ounce of sweet vermouth and two dashes of bitter. I like to make my Manhattans with bullet rye. Ed likes, I think, Woodford Reserve. Or, uh, Woodford, Elijah Craig, which is what we're, we're using Eli- tonight. Right, we're using Elijah Craig, and the Sweet Vermouth, of course, the different ones, and two dashes of Angostura bitters. So I figured this was a little bit different, and that we are tasting them blind is going to be interesting. So oh, we're going to taste the first one. Smart. We'll see if we can guess which one we think it is, since we're now experts yeah. on these three. Mm. Oh, it's not Dolan. I don't think it's Dolan. I smell so much well, vanilla. Do we have to call an hour? Can we? Just no, 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 no. I think we have to kind I of. Wanna, taste. I want to. I want to taste them all. Yes, so I agree. Right, oh, so. and don't forget, we have the Luxarder cherry. Yeah, we have a Luxarder cherry in each glass. <laughs> right. Per ed- we are being extravagant. And thank you for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is really spicy to me. Do you guys yeah. think it's really yes, spicy on the throat? My first thought is it could be the Cokie, but I feel like I need to try all of them. It's not the Dolan. <laughs> Shade. <Yeah. laughs> this is really good. I really like the first one. Okay, the second one? Are we moving on to the second one? Yeah. All right. I'm going to say with quite confidence. Oh, God. That the uh, second one is the Dolan. Yeah. 100%. I agree. The second agree. one is the Dolan. It's, it's inferior to the first one. That is true. No, it's that herb flavor just okay. pops right out. Uh huh. I think there's some people that would like this who mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. like sure, sure, sure. such 
explosive flavors as we had in the first one. Again, we are tasting these amongst each other. Like if you just got this separate from a bartender, you'd be like, oh, this isn't bad. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah, say, oh, right. my God, this is the best Absolutely. Manhattan. You're right. Yeah. If I was out to dinner and someone gave me the Dolan, I'd, just, I'd be like, all right, it's a Manhattan. I'd be okay. Mm-hmm. And i go back. Um, I mean, we were purposefully splitting hair. I actually had a Manhattan intentionally today for lunch, and I wasn't inclined enough to find what the uh, vermouth was. Oh, but you. it was so whiskey forward that it made me gag. Oh. <laughs> because I wasn't ready for it, and I took really? like a Manhattan gulp of it and not a straight whiskey sip of it. And I was like, oh, my okay. God. And I passed it to Shelby. I said, Shelby, try this. She's like, Oh my God, it's like, do they not mm, stir it? Wow. I go, I don't know, but. And you don't know what whiskey they used? Oh, I did. I asked for Woodford. Mm. Oh, so they used Woodford, but maybe too much? Mm, mm. First of all, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> there can never be too much <laughs> whiskey. We've established I know. That. I'm sorry I asked <laughs> that. I, I, I'm chagrined. <laughs> there's just not enough vermouth or not enough bitters, but there should never take whiskey out of my drink. Mm. Oh, interesting. So the third one. Okay, so let's taste the third all one. All right. Mm. 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 Third one's good. Very good. First oh, one's good. Oh, wow. A lot of cherry on that one. It's not as spicy mm-hmm. as the first one. It's much better than the second one. All right. We all know the middle one was Dolan. Now, I think the, the hard part is deciding which one is Carpano and which one is Koki. I'm going to say the third one's Carpano, the first one's First Koki. one's Koki. That's yeah. okay. what I would say as all well. Right. So we think the order that we have them in is Koki, Dolan, Carpano. I, that's what I think. Okay. that's what, And I think we're sort of all in an agreement here. I think so, too. But which one is your favorite? I think number three is my favorite. I like, obviously, one and three. Yeah. I feel so sorry for Dolan. I know. I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, Dolan. You are just sorry, not yeah. good in these drinks. We need to find something else for you. And you're starting a GoFundMe page for <laughs> Dolan. <laughs> this was not your uh, night. Not your night. Not your night. I think, I think one is, is a bit bolder and a little bit absolutely. fuller and rounder in flavor. I think three is a bit more subtle and a little more sophisticated. Mm. Okay, okay. So I can't say I like one or the other. I think they're just different. Personally, I like the uh, Carpano, I think. Well, well I should one. say that the third one. The third one, okay. I, and, the, and the reason being, I think, and I, I always go back to this, I, I am of the Manhattan, but it's a little less sweet. I always add a little less vermouth than most people. So mm. I think number one is a little too sweet for me. That's why I'm sort of thinking it is the Koki, because I always think that's a little sweeter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so number three is definitely my uh, pick for this that's one. It's interesting. I didn't get that much sweetness off it. I got the spicy, peppery, kind of bitter ending. Mm. Um, but mm. And I also think that that ending works in this drink for me. If you said, Ed, for the next month, you only have to have number one. I'm like, oh, okay. That's not a problem. I'm not going to be upset. Agreed. Um, yeah, because I said that the first one had a real spicy uh, finish to it, and I really like the spicy finish of it, but the third one is absolutely more balanced. And I think it's mm-hmm. important to mention, Scott, about the history of Carpano Antico formula and how it connected to your history. This is the formula that started vermouth, right? Yes, this is the guy who did it the first time. 1786. In Turin, Italy, yeah. Yeah. He's the one who created the modern version of Remove. Okay, so Ed, you wrote yep. down the order, and the, so what I did was I color coded them on the bottom, three different color stickers, and then I had Ed rearrange them and then poured them in that order. So Ed has the order. So you tell me the first one and what the color is. The first color was pink, and pink was. Koki D. Torino. Yes! <laughs> we knew that. Good job, guys. Good job. Which means that I know we're right then because there's no way that oh, Capon is in the middle. Yeah. It's, uh, so it was yellow and green. So the second one is yellow and the yellow is definitely Dolan. Right. And... Carpano is the green. So oh, we were correct wow. in our assessment of the vermouths in this drink. Like, I think, like, it just shows how in one night we educated ourselves on the flavor of these three vermouths to the point where we were able to identify them yes. blindly in a cocktail. Yes. yes. And I think that shows how distinct they are that we were able to do that. So if you're wondering at home, like, well, is it that distinct because you know what you're drinking? Well, we mm. just literally identified yeah. all three drinks that had the different vermouth in it. And uh, the Carpano did come out on top. But... For $15 less, <laughs> you can live with a cookie. And I know a lot of people are price sensitive where you're not going to spend more than $40 for a whiskey. Or you'd like to spend $10 for your vermouth, but mm-hmm. you might go up and, and dance with the cookie. Honestly, this worked out better than I even thought. Like yeah. when I planned this out and I decided to do three different cocktails and make three different versions of each cocktail, I was like, wow, that's a lot to drink. <laughs> <laughs> but, wow, I didn't think this was going to work, and it worked beyond my expectations. Right, and we all have one little thing to do for homework, because the Dolan showed up so weak, we have to go home and, and pair it next to the Martini and Rossi to That's see if it's idea. even worth the $15, the what? Uh, yeah, I think it was 15 for the Dolan, 20 for the Koki, and 35 for yeah. the Caparno. 
because I bought a 375 with a Copano because I was yes. cheap. <laughs> I only spent seventeen ninety nine. I kind of want to spend right. the whole five. <laughs> but now. Now, yeah, I, no. I'm going to have to tell you, you know, for the hundreds of dollars that I spent on whiskey, it's stupid not to have the best possible vermouth to enhance my cocktails. So what I did learn is I thought Cokie and Dolan were almost interchangeable flavor wise. Okay. I was completely wrong. They are not in the same ballpark right. with each other. Yeah. So I want like I want to have Rachel have the last word because she was the inspiration for this episode. But I want to have Marty say, what do you think about all of the comparisons that we did? Um, well, it depends how I make my Manhattans, right? I, yeah. I guess Carpano overall, you know, the depth and the, the overall palette yeah. uh, seems to work in all these cocktails. Um, yeah. We call it excellence, mortal. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the, uh, you know, the, I've been drinking Koki for a while. And again, I always adjust my Koki because I always say I think it's too sweet, even though it has mm-hmm. a, a little bitter, bitter back end. end. Yep. I'd like to have both of these in my fridge at home. Right. Cause right. maybe if I have a, um, something like, a Woodford that's super sweet. Maybe I want the Cokie to kind of counter it and make it yeah, a little bit bitter. Exactly. And then if I have like a more of a dry rye, maybe I want the Capano for the sweetness to mm-hmm. help. And then but Dolan's like, well, I'm sweet to you. Shut the fuck up, Dolan. <laughs> you have no part in this conversation. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, so Rachel, <laughs> you're a huge fan of the Cokie. So is Carpano now better for you? I have to say my eyes have been open. The Carpano, I feel like it is a little more sophisticated. I think the flavors are better integrated. Yeah. Mm. Um, Definitely makes a more balanced cocktail. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have a sweet tooth and I think, mm-hmm. you know, that's why the Koki appealed mm-hmm. to me. And I feel like maybe I'm going to progress from the Koki to the Carpano. You know, for you, it might be the fact that the Carpano includes caramelized sugar and not just regular sugar. And you might, your sweet tooth, that might be the sophistication of flavor. You're, you're noticing like another yeah. step to the sugar, but now it's kind of caramelized sugar. So it adds a little bit more depth of sweetness. Yeah, 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 I think you're right. I think you're right. You know, I think how we should look at it from now on is the Koki is our new Martini and Rossi. Oh! And our <laughs> Carpano now is our upscale. You're not going right. to go oh, wrong I, with I that. Like yeah, like that's it. for sure. Right, I can't find any Carpano this sweet but we got cookie all right oh all right. yeah we, we can do it honey co- don't feel bad cookie's delicious we'll do fine <laughs> all i can find is dolan oh no, no. <laughs> oh god oh my god let's use a dolan for gnat traps which is what we use for the last bottle of dolan i had in my house was to catch all the gnats in the damn kitchen that <laughs> trap oh you know what happened i'll be honest with you i left okay. my manhattan on the table i went upstairs to do something came back five minutes later there were three gnats in there i said well, fuck this. I'm going to make a gnat trap with vermouth if they like it that much. So I made like a bastardized Manhattan, put some like dish soap in there, put the plastic on top, poked toes, and I had like 35 gnats in there in 24 hours. Wow. I'm not even lying. Oh. Wow. Wow. Oh, so now we found the use for the Dolan. That's right. <laughs> yeah. that's, right. Oh, that's sad. And the, and the that reason, is wait, sad. And the reason why I moved. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And take us out. All right. So. Uh, if you're sitting home and you're like, you like to come home on a Friday, you've worked hard, you sit down to have a Manhattan, you still grab that martini rots you off the door of the fridge and like Don't feel do like it. you're doing some stuff. Stop. Stop. Listen, it's comfortable. You know, it's like an old sweatshirt you pull on from high school and it's tight, but you still like it. You deserve better. Right. Yeah. So then you say, you know what? I want to do something different. We suggest start with the Koki. The Koki yes. is a step up. And then when you know you like it and you want to go you know, spend $35 for that recipe that goes back to the times of Washington and Lafayette. Mm. Mm-hmm. The nice. Italian sweet vermouth, the Carpano Antica Formula. Do it. It's delicious. It won us today. It came in here. It was. I felt a little cocky, a little arrogant. I'm the closer. <laughs> and sure enough, it actually did all three rounds. Somehow it found a way to close the last round too. <laughs> yeah. So I do want to say, however, today, the day we're recording, August 28th, is Tw- National Red Wine Day. Woo! Wow, look at that. Yeah. So, hey, man, all coming up roses. All right. <laughs> So, for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, we thank Marty and Rachel so much um, for coming here today Thanks and for, for coming, guys. giving me a graduation present of Blood Oath Number oh, 7. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Which, you deserve it. You deserve which you they are, are so kind to do. And anybody who'd like to send me a graduation present, <laughs> please just <laughs> <laughs> email whiskeytangent at g- gmail.com. <laughs> anyway, Shameless. It's the least you can do. And anyone in Honduras listening to us. Oh. Um, um, <laughs> private inside joke. Yeah. Please be careful and stay alert. Yes. And uh, call your parents. Okay. <laughs> All right. So with Scandi Podcast, I'm Ed. I'm Scott. I'm Rachel. I'm Marty. Buy some good vermouth. Make some cocktails. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Later.
If you enjoyed this podcast episode, be sure to check out our next episode, which is way better than this one. Oh, yeah. Also, follow and like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash whiskey tangent. And follow us on Twitter at whiskey tangent. You can follow me personally at that whiskey guy and follow Scott at giant cup of awesome spelled a W S U M just to be annoying. Hey, you can email us any questions, comments, or love at whiskey tangent at gmail.com. And of course you can find us always at our podcast website, whiskey tangent dot podbean.com.